Hey, it's Joe Fair with Geek Toolkit. In this episode, we're going to talk about how I make my YouTube videos using Sony Vegas and PowerPoint. We'll talk about 10 different tips. That being said, I want to celebrate 5,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. And hopefully, as I make this video, I'm going to teach you a little bit about who I am personally, because I typically don't do that in my videos. But as part of my 5,000 subscriber thing, I thought that would be appropriate. If you watch my videos, you know I don't like wasting your time, so we're going to get going right now. First thing is... I have a notepad that has this whole video laid out for me. That will help me go through it and stay on track. And the reason I say that is whenever I'm editing, I always have my flow of what my points are that I'm trying to get across so I can cut things down and make everything very information dense. Information density to me is the key to my channel being successful and the key to not wasting your time. So that's the first thing. And then we're gonna talk about that on edits. Here I am in Sony Vegas. I'm using Sony Vegas 17, but I've actually done this in 14. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull our intro down here to the timeline. I've just brought this into Project Media. We're also going to bring down uh, a clip from my last pedestal video that I did. I did an arcade pedestal. I love arcades. I grew up with them as a kid. This is my intro. I picked this up for about 20 bucks off of one of those sites where you buy intros. There's lots of them. Okay, let's talk about control. And here I'm talking about pedestal arcades. And what we're going to do is I want to talk when I talk about information density, the idea is to cut out the BS or the, cut out the stuff that you don't want in there. So I say here we're going to talk about control panels. And then I talk for a bit. And if you listen carefully, you'll see where I actually go off tangent and then I come back to it. We're going to find that tangent point, cut it, and I'll show you that. This is tip number one. This is editing. Control options because there's only, I mean, the controller is probably one of the, in my opinion, one of the most important things. And I did a button video that talked about the differences between like half buttons and standby buttons and all that. But let's talk about like, what are your choices on a pedestal arcade? Okay, so I say, let's talk about like, like I'm a teenager, so let's talk about like, what are your choices on a pedestal arcade? That's where I want to start from. What are your choices on a pedestal arcade? Everything else where I talk about in another video, well, I don't need to say that because in YouTube, you can have a thing called a card come over and they can click on that to take them to another video. So let's get to that like line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and drag it down. And now I can kind of see my, my uh, waveforms here. We're going to go back a bit. Let's talk about like, what are... Okay. So this is probably the word like right here. Let's see. Like, what are your... Yeah, okay, that was the word like. So this should put me at what are your... What are your choices on a... Okay, I'm going to hit S to split that there. And then we're going to go back here. Now, this was kind of me, I don't know, scratching my belly or... or oh, I was straightening my shirt. And you can see the waveform here starts for talking. So we're going to go right there. We'll clip that off because we don't need that anymore. And then I want to figure out where to stop this at. So let's hit. Okay, let's talk about control options. Let's talk about control options. Because there's only, I mean. The all right. So we can get rid of all of that right there. Fluff. Get rid of that. We don't need any of that. Let's get going down to here. Okay. Talk about control options. What are your choices on a pedestal arcade? Love it. Okay, now I've, I've, I've cut that down, but the transition, what's called the transition between the two clips is really rough. It's just one thing and then boom, it jumps. And I'll show you two transitions here. This is the, the intro. Watch from here to the first clip to the second clip. Okay, let's talk about control options. What are your choices on a pedestal? Okay, so this one is really rough and the second one just needs a little smoothing. For smoothing, I can take this and drag it over and you see this overlay here what that'll do is what's called a crossfade and this is what it looks like control option what are your choices on a pedestal there that smooths that out i'm good with that this one here there's another way to take transitions you can click on them and you can click and drag this down here and this is a uh just a, to give you a sample of what this will look like okay let's talk about control so that was a more uh abrupt transition or or i'm sorry a, a bigger transition it was the, the blinds there Show it one more time. Okay, let's talk about And I like that because if I'm going from one scene to another where it's really abrupt, I don't want to do just a crossfade. It won't be as good, so I'm going to do that one. Okay, so that's how I do transitions. Uh, the next thing is color. what's called color grading or LUTs. 
if you look at this right here, I'm going to apply what's called a track effects over here. And this will apply to the entire track. I'm going to do it on the video track instead of the audio. So there we go. And there's one called, uh, this is film process. This is from Boris effects, which I got with Sony 17 for free. And I can take the gamma correction here and I can darken it. And the reason I'm doing this is this is black. Like it, it's almost a jet black. I'm looking back over it. And then my shirt is a much more blue. So you can see like when I darken this, I get that black. My shirt gets to the correct color. It's darkening everything though, because I'm adjusting the gamma. But it does make the, the color in the video look a bit sharper. And I'll, I'll, here, let's turn that off and show you. That's it kind of washed out with lighting. Now, if my lighting was better and I didn't use overhead lighting, then I wouldn't have the shadows up here as bad as I do. But you can see, I definitely can make it better. And I do this with my videos now. This is something I've started doing recently. Let me show you a different way to do this. I'm going to hit this here to add what's called a LUT. So Sony Vegas has LUTs in 17. Not all versions have this. By the way, I got Sony Vegas off of a Humble Bundle um, for, you know, whatever I donated, $50 or whatever. So I know it's a $500 program, but even starting out, I was able to get it. Here's a LUT filter. A LUT is a uh, lookup table, and LUTs are available out there. Profes it's kind of like having a professional come in and adjust your look for you. It's more than just lighting. It's highlights, midtones, and a bunch of other stuff. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a LUT, this contrast LUT that I've been using. And you see what happens here is this wall color is much closer to my actual wall color. My shirt is the brighter blue. This blackened up, but it didn't darken everything or lighten everything. It kind of changed the midtones and so on. And so I can change the strength of it to, you know, if I think it goes too much. But let's turn that off again. So it just cleans up the video. And I've been doing this lately. It's I really like it. I feel like it's making my videos look better. And let's compare it to the other one. See that darkened everything. And that kind of lightened it. Turn them both on. And it really gets crazy. But <laughs> So we'll, we'll take that LUT filter on that track. So everything applied on that track. Now I don't want my LUT filter to hit all tracks. So I'm going to add a couple of video tracks. I typically have two additional video tracks at any given time. And one is for text that I want to show up. And the other one is for images I want to show up. So that way the text will be in front of the image. The image will be in front of the video. Okay. Uh, one other thing I want to show you real quick is the audio. So I'm going to, this audio, you see the waveforms are really small. If I play this real quick, watch over here on the side, watch the number. For getting different controls. So negative 21 or so. Basically you're going to start drilling holes. I somehow panned my audio over. Let me fix this real quick. There we go. Holes with a drill press. Um, engine at eighth, I believe, for your buttons. Okay, so it looks like I'm about negative 21, negative 24. I'm gonna. I want this so more of a negative 15. So I need this to be louder. This here, watch where it goes. Whoa, way loud. It's up in the negative sixes. To get my audio level, I need to fix that. So what I'll do is I'll select both these, right click, switches, normalize. Now you see it amplified on this side. Let's see where we're at here. For getting different controls. Whoa, negative six. It's a lot louder over here. Way too loud. So now we need to, uh, we can lower the volume of both to get them down. I want to get them down about 12 or 15. So let's take this down about three decibels, minus three. I'll do there. Let's see how we're doing here. Okay, and then the other thing is if I take this blue line, because I want to adjust just this clip down. And I'm going to take this down about five dBs. There we go. So that's at negative nine. Okay, let's talk about. Oh, this is a little loud too. We'll take this down another about three dBs. Control option. What are your choices on a pedestal or cave for getting different controls? Uh, so that was a situation where I have to go through all my clips. I didn't go through this one here and lower this one yet. But now uh, when I play this, the DIY. Basically, you're going to start about negative 12 to 15 where I want to be um, when I play this. Eight. Take it down a little bit more. And now my level will be audio. My audio will be leveled. I will probably spend 10 or 15 minutes on audio tracks and I'll have probably 30 or 40 of them at the end of any given video. Keep in mind, this editing process typically takes me weeks and I'm trying to blast through it to show you stuff. So that was audio. That was the fourth thing. So we did. Um, 
so far we did editing, transitions, color grading, and audio. Now we're going to jump over to PowerPoint because I use PowerPoint for this and do some really fun stuff. And I'm going to try to show you what I call a lower third, which is my text that flies in and out. You can purchase this and it sometimes will come in like these complex video packages. I've downloaded some. I've never been happy with importing somebody else's lower thirds. This has been the fastest way I've done it. So this tip alone should be worth a whole video. What I've got here is just text. Uh, don't worry about the box around it. The way we're going to create that box and really style it is we're just going to go to quick styles and we will pick something like this. So now I have something that is like the banner that's going to come in. The other thing I need to do is set my background. So I'll go to design and format background. We're going to change it to, oops, sorry, uh, solid fill. We're going to change it to an obnoxious green. There we go. Okay, and that's so we can chroma key it out later. The other thing we're going to do here is we're going to animate this to, to slide in. So if we go to animations and fly in, now you see it flew up from the bottom. We want to actually do from the left, effect options from the left. Now, if you want to do more stuff with this, you can actually go to the animation pane here and then go to effect options. And you can do some really cool stuff like you can smooth it. And so let's see what that looks like. So you can smooth in the ending or the beginning to kind of give it a bit of a, a more of a gradual uh, appearance. And then you duplicate it. You take this and you reverse the animation to go out. And so you'll have the exit. Once you have both of these, you can say file export and you can export them as a video. And then you will have a lower third and I'll show you how to put those in in a second. Actually, I'll show you how to put them in now. So I have them. Um, this is a lower third. Remember, I created these two tracks here. One is for text. We're going to have it show up when I start talking. And when I put the thing over here, the green takes over, right? So we're going to go to where the blue slides on. Right there, we're going to slice S to slice that. And now we'll move it in. So that way our timing is right. And now we're going to take the beginning of this and we're going to move it in. And we'll take the end of this and move it in. So what I'm doing is mousing over till it looks like that icon there. And that's a fade. So then you'll see this will oh, fade actually, in. What are your choices on a pedestal or a cave? And we can change the duration of that fade to make it fade in slower and so on. And we can change the duration of the whole text flying in and out if we want. The other thing we want to do is we need to chroma key this out. So we're going to go to FX on this clip. We're going to look for the chroma, chroma keyer. And then I'm going to take this color and take the, the dropper. And I'm going to dropper it over here. And see what that did is that gets rid of it. Now I'm going to tweak it a little bit because it's it didn't quite get what I wanted. And there we go. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's see what this looks like. So control option. What are your choices on a pedestal or cave? There's my well, getting different controls. thing coming in. There's my name and then we'll One zoom of off you can do a DIY. and the whole thing zooms off. I can again tweak that and adjust it. I can make it look more fancy. I can put an image behind it. I can do all that in PowerPoint and animate it. And then when I export it and import it here, I've got a lower third. And then if I go into PowerPoint, clone those slides and change the text and export the whole thing as a video, it's very easy to clip in to here. So that's some PowerPoint tip number one. I've got three PowerPoint tips that I want to show. Uh, the other thing I want to show is this here. This is a very basic image. And what I want to do is typically I want to have an image in my videos that looks really fancy. So what's cool about this, this is something I found out. If you go to design, you click on design ideas over here, what it will do is it will Take, especially if you post and put an image in here, it will come up with all of these really artistic things uh, based on your idea. And it'll actually analyze the words and do stuff based on that. And I'll show that in a second. But here's a bunch of really cool layouts and graphics that it did. It's analyzing the picture and going based on that. And I can just kind of scroll down and try to find something. I can export this and then I can import it into my video and have that as a slide or as a part of the video. Now that was one, uh, let's show another couple just to kind of have fun with this. This is uh, home automation. And this one, these look kind of basic. This is kind of cool here because it's actually looking at the words like lighting and it's adding icons. But overall, I don't, I don't particularly like this. So watch what happens. So we're going to go to insert pictures, stock images. That way everything licensed what is, is fine. We're going to say electronics. I'm going to pick a cool picture here. And now 
it gives me stuff. It uses the picture and it really starts lighting up. So now I've got icons, I've got a layout, I've got the picture of the background. This is a really fast way to make some really cool slides uh, for anything that you do. So one more, Seattle, Washington traffic. And let's see, we're gonna say design, design ideas. Yeah, it's not, so again, this is using a cloud AI and sometimes it nails it, sometimes it doesn't, but I'm doing a live video here. So I kind of get what I get, but I think with the two examples I showed, I got some really cool slides that I can show off. So cool. That is the second thing. The third and final thing you've seen me do is uh, 3D rotations. So what's crazy about this is you can take an STL from Thingiverse or anywhere, uh, Yegi or whatever, you take an STL and drop it into here. So I'm going to take this STL and drop it. And this is the Enterprise D. And I was talking about how I will tell you a bit more about myself. I'm a huge Star Trek fan, a huge sci-fi fan in general. And the of all my sci-fi, the Star Trek Next Generation was my favorite. So look, I drove this STL and I can actually rotate it. Now, what's cool about this is not only is it cool if I want to put that on a slide, but I am going to create a new slide here. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to right click and duplicate this slide and I will show you something really neat with this. So on this slide here, if I move this and I say transitions and select a morph transition, it will animate between those two slides and it will animate everything I do. So if I, for whatever reason, think that this needs to do a barrel roll and minimize, then when it previews, it will it will barrel roll and minimize. So that's how I've been doing all my 3D and, uh, animations. You see the Raspberry Pis and stuff flying around. Um, that's that's basically the secret. So uh, thanks for watching this because that, that's hopefully a cool one that you didn't know about. Okay, let's go back to the video and we showed how to put the um, the tracks in. We showed how to do this. I'm looking over at my my tips or my, my slides here. It's clean slide info. Oh, let me show you something uh, real quick browser stuff. So I actually grew up in Las Vegas and that's part of the excuse for this. This is a, a Bing search and I've got a Google search. The Bing search, one of the things is if you go over to this filter thing, you can say uh, what resolution you want. People have asked me on different videos, how do you get like a 4K resolution image for the Samsung video, for instance, or people are asking me on the Dynaframe video. This is how I do it. This is one thing. The other thing that's really useful here is the licensing. I can select public domain. And now I have images that I know I can use. I don't have to worry about it. It's great for YouTube. Johnson Atoll, I actually was stationed here. I was in the military for three years in the army. I was stationed on Johnson Atoll. So this is what the Google version looks like. You go to tools and then you've got a labeled for commercial or non-commercial use. Uh, so it's a little bit different wording. And then they have like small, medium, large. So anyway, quick uh, web tip for using browsers to get info, uh, getting stuff useful for you that you can not only useful, but safe uh, to use. Okay, um, animating a photo. Okay, so let's bring in that photo. Let's see, I have a photo here. And what I'm gonna show here is how I bring a photo into Vegas. I've been doing this lately. You see, when you drag the photo and you've got the sides here, that, that stinks, I mean, that's not good. The other thing is when this photo pops up, watch how um, it's yeah. abrupt, right? So let's do the, the fade trick. And so I will do that. Um, there we go. Cool. Now, the other thing is this little crop logo here. If you click on that, you get this UI, which took me a while to figure out. But the thing I learned that was really good is if you go to 16 by 9 widescreen, it will actually crop the picture. It will, it will adjust this to fill the screen. See how the sides are filled in now? The way it did that, though, is it zoomed in. So it actually cut the top off of the Paris uh, Eiffel Tower here in front of the Paris. So what I want to do is I would actually like to animate and show like a, a tracking shot. So what I'm going to do is bring this up and I want to start there at the top of the Paris and I want this to go down over two seconds. So this right here is actually a timeline. If I click on two seconds and plus I add a keyframe and at that keyframe, I'm going to have this go all the way down. And so now what happens is we get this. Um, engine at eighth, I believe for your buttons. Okay. One more tweak I want to do. It started animating before it was faded in. So I'm going to edit this here and I'm going to go in and add another keyframe. And at this keyframe, I want it to be at the top. It will animate between keyframes. The first two keyframes it's at the top. It'll stay there. And then the last keyframe will be at the bottom. Let's see what the final thing looks like here. Um, engine at eighth, there's I the fade buttons and the start. And okay. 
Um, one last thing, uh, outro, real simple. If you go to media generators, you select black or whatever color you want, and you click it over here, that's a 10 second uh, blackness. Let's see, we'll go over here so we get a uh, crossfade into it. And this is useful for when you want to put like your, your tags and stuff at the end. See, it fades to black there. Then you can have your subscriber tag and your uh, videos, your playlists and such for your viewers. And then we can drag, of course, some music on there. I use the, uh, I was actually looking for my music. I don't have my music up here. I would drag a music track down here, do the audio leveling and be good to go. Again, I don't want to waste your time. I want you to know a little bit more about me. I'm Joe Ferret with Geek Toolkit. Thank you for getting me to 5,000 subscribers. I'm going to work hard and try to get to the next 5,000. So I'll see you all at 10,000. Thanks for watching.